chin dropper. All right, guys, we're back, and I, you know, I think you need to be, you know, if you're videotaping or you're watching the video, you've got to be saying to yourself, how interested is this dog in this handler? If it's not extremely interested in the handler, you need to understand it could be, and so that's what you need to have. Not, yay. <laughs> this is the new thing. I don't know if you've seen this part, if you're there, Chelsea. Oh, it's called the little chin drop. His little chin's gonna drop. Hello, Naeem. I want you to type out your question. I'll, I'll do a video to show you uh, if you still don't have the one retrieving. I've got that one little bird dog here. Yay. Yay. And I want you to understand that doesn't mark the behavior of the dog as much as it marks the behavior of the handler. If he does it again, if you said, what do you need to do? Make it small. And he's going to really get comfortable now. And it's time for his morning nap. Let me see if I can get him to put his chin down. Oh, oh no, he's ready to dance. Okay, let's dance. He mistook that for let's dance. So you do need to work on the dog's orientation to the handler. And if you said we don't have, pay any specificity, you're doing it wrong. You are doing it wrong. The dog, if, if this dog, it's got to be like dancing, you guys, or it isn't going to work. So, and you've got to say, how do I want you to orient to you? Because if you said, well, you got the dog that's in front of the handler and you got the dog that's beside the handler. Uh, yeah, so you could work on that. You've got to work on that. If you said that's a separate subtask, yeah, it is. You know, if you really wanted one to be up there, rest its chin on you and stuff, and this would be the way to go. You could easily do that. Oh, you could easily open the vending machine. You've got to safeguard this inner concentric circle. If you think that you could come here and sit next to me, next thing I'm poking at you, next thing when you're not looking, I'm tossing you. No, that's not gonna happen. If you sit around, step, step. I don't even know how to dance. He's the dancer of this team. He is the dancer. All right, so now we're gonna go this way, and I want you, I want you to look at the tail, but they do. And there's got to be an ending. This is where people go wrong. They can't see the end coming. And it just drives on and on and on and on and on. Hi, Michael. Thank you for joining the show. And I, I want you to know I'm, I'm very impressed with you. And I, I think you're much more intellectual than the average dog trainer. Uh, that's my assessment of you. I, you know, I, you're much more of an intellectual and people that are really committed to dogs don't say things like I know how to train without a this is the kind of bullshit I get Michael luckily I know how to train without a collar so, so that's it you know how to train you're seeking no more knowledge and well that's it okay got it and, you know so if you said to me those people are more committed not that I can see they're not more committed if you said well they start their live e-collar show earlier they don't even have one <laughs> they don't even have one oh my god oh my god I am, you've got to be more beautiful. I am augmenting my movements with the pager, thus making it easier to understand. If you said, well, what about, you? if I go to someone's house, I augment my movements with the pager to say, I'm a block from your house, where am I? So every time that light goes out, it's just concurrent with the pager. Your job initially is just to get the pager into the dynamic. And my advice is follow this exact methodology that I've developed. Because if you said, well, I'm just going to add the pager to my existing methodology, that's where people go wrong. That's why they don't know how to do it. Uh, hang on. So now if you said, okay, so he'll take big steps. What about, you got to make tiny steps too. So, you know, under the pretense that dogs model your behavior, get as much of that going on as you can.
That's, I want you to understand, Mike. I, I hope you're there. I, I want you to understand that head movement is involuntary. It's involuntary. That's how enamored this dog is of all my movements. Because it believes it's saying something. It may not always know what it's saying, but it's trying to figure out. It's trying to figure out. He's trying to figure out. If you say go fast. And then there's got to be a very specific end, though. And if you said, well, why aren't you saying anything? I figured out words don't matter. If you said, I don't like the way he Don't like the way he moves. Bulldogs don't even move that way. <laughs> Look at him. Oh, he's a monster. He's my little monster. He's doing all that of his own accord, though. If you said you taught him to go up there. No, I didn't. I rewarded him for going up there. But I never taught him to go up there. He did it on his own. All right, so our new thing. Uh-oh, uh-oh, hang on. Let me turn this hose off. Yeah, because now I have to realize it's running all the salt out of my stupid softener. Hang on. Now, if, if you ask me, why is this dog so interested in you? Because I've taken everything I've learned in 26 years and applied it to this dog. I've actually trained dogs longer than that. I worked for other people, but I've had this business for 26 years. So it took me three months to get a down on this dog. <laughs> But it, now it's never going to go away. And that is your job. If you're training dogs for people, your job is not to run it through some little repertoire to show these people it's trained. It's to install permanent behaviors that aren't going to go away. So if you said, if I came there and sat down, yeah, you could assume the role of the handler with this dog because I've set up so many things I've set the scene so clearly. The handler's got a pager, the handler's sitting down, the handler's walking, the handler's saying yay. The handler has very specific movements. And this is what you guys have to be more in control of your body, you know? So if you said what happened, I did my pager, but I have different ways. I can make it look like he's sitting here. So, oh my God, look at it. It's trying to get away. You know, I'm controlling my upper body. I can make it look like I'm going fast. I'm doing things. I'm not, I don't want you guys to run. There, you really, I don't want you to run. He's giving it all the shake. I was like, whew. Oh, and you need to do make notes of that when they do give you the shake off. And if you, if you said, what can you do? Yay. He's going to put his chin down. Um, the only thing you can do is... Roll, uh, hang on, guys, let me grab more treats and grab my dumbbells. The only thing you can do is make a note of it and understand that at some later point, it may come back to haunt you. <laughs> and if you said, what do you mean? Oh, later, when you needed to do something, it made... You know, you, you would not... I would not say, I can't believe he didn't do it. I would say that was foreseeable based on his shake off. But you can't take it personally in, in an older dog. I can't, it's, I, it's a struggle to get the collar on. I'm sure you can see how he did just a big... He's like that thing on Ghostbusters, that, that it thing that just flops around with no form. <laughs> All right, hang on.
he's doing it himself. <laughs> he does it on his own now. <sighs> but if you said you're looking at a dog that's, you know, was obviously a good candidate for training and that, you know, clearly had a lot of track to be, the thing was this close to being put to sleep. Ask Nina if, if, if I hadn't said yes, he was dead. And honestly, it kills me to think of that now. It, it, it kills me to think of that now, how close this dog came to being euthanized. It's, it, it was this close. If you said, what is he? Oh, he is the scary neighbor dog. Oh, he could kill. It could have tell. One time it came out of the bushes and scared him. Oh, it was awful. So I am starting to say the bouncy flouncy, you know, because if you said, what do you want? I want a bouncing bulldog. And I like it. There's got to be an end point, though, and you need to make, this is what you guys need to remember. You've got to break things down into subtasks. And you need to reward the subtasks throughout your training. Don't make things into exercises and drills and then repeatedly do those it's 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 that's where you're gonna lose your animation michael i gotta go get my glasses i'm blind as a bat me and all the duck none of us can see anything that's why i've got this have to this pages i'm gonna go inside and get my glasses on a second though but let me just run up there he's invented his own now but what i did was because he couldn't get up that slide i put the uh and he can uh, but I put the platform on the other side so that it's now he's at least lifted up six inches. He is going to have to make an effort. So if you said do everything with no words, okay. But if you said how specific are you being about your body? I mean, if you look at any of the pictures, my arms are up. My arms aren't just random. If you said you're a maestro with your arms, yes, I, I'm a maestro with my arms and my whole body. So he's going to have to jump to get up there. Let me spin him around. Let me give him a big... So if you said, what are you jockeying this thing? Click, 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 click. Once you get a feel of it, and once you're super synced in with the dog, I'm understanding now you can even bump it and make their feet go fancy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a little farther into it, but he's looking for a cue. The cue is going to be first the handler looks. It's pretty obvious. He's saying to himself, where are this thing's going? It's so, so obvious. Anyone could figure it out. All right, so he's going to have to make a big jump. <sighs> he's not in shape for that kind of thing yet. We're going to build him up slowly. Very, very slowly. It, and it wouldn't be hard to get him if you said you couldn't get him doing, you know, like those positions like they do with the Malinois. Yeah, I think I could. I think I could because he's very fluid. He's very fluid. He'll move. And he does have a delivered in hand. I don't want to combine that with my jump right now, though, so I'm just going to do it over here. He's got a delivered a hand, and if you said how hard was that, it was pretty hard. <laughs> that was pretty hard. These people were giving this girl advice about how to teach a dog. First, teach it to pick it up, then teach it to hold, and then teach it to take it to its toy box. Well, that sounds pretty simple. Just tell it, teach it to pick it up. <laughs> Yeah, people need a little more than that to come up with the process. So what he goes on is a visual. The excitement has to be contained within the handler. Now, if you said send him back over there with the pager, it's going to take a, a second wait. It's what we call the delayed reaction handling. <laughs> You give the signal, and then some later point, the dog does it. <laughs> I do see where I can teach him to handle from here, though. If you said, oh, well, put him that way, put him on that side. <laughs> oh, I love you, Deliver. It's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. 
All right, let me see if I can get him back on this green thing. Oh, your deliver is the most perfect deliver of any bulldog. Oh, he's got the world's best bulldog deliver. I'm willing to bet on that. So, you know, honestly, if you have a video where the dog is not looking at the handler, your job needs to be to say, what am I doing wrong that this dog isn't looking at me? You know, your job is to be the most fascinating person. These dogs have met all kind of people, you know. If you said, well, they're just looking for head rubs, well, anybody can do that. No, he's very alert. Anyway, he's got to get his bath today. Oh, he's got to get his bath because he smells like a billy goat. So I do the double blink thing, too. And you said, how do you really, really get him looking at you? You do that. You get the treat, and you make the double blink the precursor. Oh, they'll look dead into your eyes. Anyway. I think you guys get the idea, and... You know, if it, if it has the ability to move around, if you said, what's the better? You having the ability to move the dog around, if you said, well, I, I can move him over here. Be careful. Oh, I saw that coming. Oh, you'll never get your... You'll never get your industrial agility title if you do these things. Oh. Oh. He's going to have to get in much better shape. Much better shape. All right, now he's going to lay down. I can signal him to lay down. It's all delayed reaction with this dog. Watch him. He's going to lay down. Oh, and he got very, very comfy. And I've never made the dog stay up there. That's what you have to understand. He's going to put his chin down now, watch. As long as this dog doesn't bark. He's not going to be able to help himself. It's honestly a reflex. He's already a little comfortable. And he sleeps 23 hours a day. What he's saying to himself, there is something from here more that I can do. He's saying, well, he's trying to think what it is, but... Not, I'm, he's not, this is what it is, Michael. He's not thinking if I get up, I'm going to, yay. He, he was not saying if I get up, I'm going to get corrected. He said there's actually, there's actually more than this. He's going to go drink out of that bowl, maybe. He's thirsty. Oh, he's a big drinker, that one. Anyway, guys, I'm just going to run through the training dog, so. It was another monsoon last night, if you said when. Uh, luckily, I got about seven-eighths of the dogs walked <laughs> before the monsoon hit. Yikes. All right, guys, be right back.